Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'll show you how to put together the quilt called Charms for Baby. If you'd like to purchase this pattern or the magazine that it appears in, you can visit our website and get it there. Okay, we're going to be working with five inch charms and a wonderful um, selection of really modern prints and we're going to pair it up with kind of a creamy butter color and we're going to create a block, uh, a one block quilt basically that will take you no time to make as a gift. So we're going to be taking those five inch charms, pre-cut five inch squares and we're going to be creating rows, simple piecing. Um, you're probably going to want to take your five inch squares though and lay them out so that your colors um, are interspersed so you don't have all the yellows together or all the greens. I am not really good at doing totally random, uh, just letting it fall random. I like to look ahead to see that my colors are um, interspersed really um, fairly evenly because you can see there are grays and, and yellows that you're going to want to break up um, in a pattern. So create rows of blocks like this and make sure you take time to press so that your seam allowances are going in different directions as you create your rows. I'll lay out here. We've got one row with seam allowances going in one direction. The next row then the seam allowances going in the opposite direction so that when you join rows, and I'll bring them together here, we would, you will have what we call opposing seams and that just means that as the seams come together, you match them up one over the top of the other, that they kind of lock together. And that creates a nice, neat intersection. You'll get good um, alignment because this is kind of a checkerboard kind of, of look. You want your seams not to stretch one over the other. So you create the entire center part of the quilt. You follow the diagrams in your quilt or in your magazine or in your pattern for the number across and down. So you've got that center. But out of those squares, it also told you to reserve 22 of the um, five inch squares. And then you're going to take those and you're going to subcut them up. As you see the top and the bottom, just two borders on this quilt, have pieces that are kind of fractured into smaller rectangles. So from each of the five inch squares, you're going to be cutting three one and a half inch by five inch rectangles. You're just going to waste a really tiny small piece here on the edge. So you'll have those three. You'll cut down through all of those reserved squares so that you have an entire array of pieces like this to play with. And this is a point where you can then um, again kind of design out of that that you're going to be joining four pieces together and you're going to be creating Let's put, this is where you can play with your colors and the arrangement. And you're going to be making um, a unit out of that. Now this is where we're headed. I'll show you what they look like. I've got some joined already. Here's what we're going to be creating. But I'm going to take those to the sewing center and we're going to talk about the joining of those pieces so that they stay nice and square. Now, I could come in and, and foreseeably most people would think, well, just, just stitch down each one. But what I'm going to want to do is alternate the direction that I'm sewing. Otherwise, this neat square could turn into somewhat of a diamond as it gets distorted. So we're going to join two pieces together. And you can do this in um, kind of a piggyback fashion here. Put the first two. And I know these are the two also that I want to put together. So I'm going to join those right behind and chain piece those. One, this is a, a great place to practice your quarter inch seaming if you're new to quilting. It's also a great place if you are a well seasoned quilter to double check your quarter inch seam and make sure that you are um, being accurate in your seaming. And it could also be a project that you could work together with maybe a, a, a young quilter or a young person that you want to teach a little bit about quilting, this would be a really good project to work together on. So I've sewn in the same direction going down these two. I'm keeping them together. I'm going to set the seam for both of these. And you can use steam if you like or not. I'm going to press my seam allowances in one direction 
And I'm going to use my fingernail to kind of open up that seam all the way to the stitching on both of those. You don't want to leave a what we call a false ditch or kind of a gap in between. You want to make sure that you open it all the way up because when you're done you want your square or your unit to be the correct size. And if it's not opened all the way, your unit will be narrower than it needs to be. Now I've sewn in the same direction across these, so I'm going to lay them right sides together and I'm going to sew in the opposite direction this time. And then I can take it to the sewing machine. The tail on this, because the, the machine will cut the thread for me, tells me that's where I finished, so I'm going to go back the other direction. That's why we leave a little tail there. Kind of nice option to have on a machine that it will cut thread for me. That way I can always remember which direction I've been sewing. Come back and do the last seam for this unit. Again, take, this is kind of a back and forth thing, but it's a good exercise to get up from the sewing machine, not just sit there for long periods of time, and set your seams, and then I, since I want all my seam allowances going in the same direction, know which direction the first two are going, and repeat that so that they're all swimming in the same direction. Again, this is a great project for a mother-daughter, a grandmother, and a granddaughter to work on together, maybe for a new person who's going to be coming into their family. Okay, now I've got that, so all the seam allowances are going in one direction, and as I join those, rows together, I will note that, that these seam allowances are going up and these are going, I'm going to turn it so they're going in the downward fashion, so that when I join these together, I will have opposing seams at each of those intersections and that way they'll lock together when you take it to the sewing machine and stitch across that and you'll have the exact same thing we've got going on here. You can see opposing seams, these all go in one direction, these go in the opposite, and they nest together. And when you open it up, all of your intersections create wonderful little um, points and corners there. So you're going to make enough units to go across the top and the bottom of your quilt, but there's a spacer bar. Remember we talked about that kind of um, butter color yellow. It's a spacer between the five inch charm or the five inch squares and your pieced upper and lower borders. You can make your own charms for baby quickly and efficiently. Have fun. And for more of our video tutorials, you can visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.